Yeah, so what I was saying is that uh, please let's make sure that we meet at least once in a week. The timetable shows Monday from 8 to 10. Uh, I'm always flexible. But what I want that we should ensure is that let us meet at least once a week. Mm-hmm. If for one reason we have failed to meet on a Monday from 8 to 10, we can arrange another day within that week. So at least let's meet once a week. I was telling your friend here that in this uh, semester I don't have many courses and uh, unless something changes I am having classes on Mondays and Tuesdays. I am free Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Any time Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So for one reason if we fail to meet on a Monday, please let us communicate and then arrange another day because I want us to be meeting once in a week. That's one. I have also indicated that the, we have lost the two lectures. The calendar shows that the, this semester was supposed to start on 9th, that is two Mondays ago, uh, the past two weeks. But we failed because there was still that closure by the government because of Korea. So the 9th was not, uh, we did not meet. And then the following week, on the 16th, it was a holiday, don't you the day, uh, which should have happened on the 15th because it was a Sunday. So already we have missed two classes. And to me, that is something uh, that we cannot just say, let's forget those two. I am going to ask for a makeup class for at least one of the missed sessions. Uh, it will depend on you. If we can meet this week again, uh, just to compensate one of the lectures we missed, uh, any day from Wednesday up to Friday, you will be able to advise me to say, no, I think we'll be free uh, on this day, this week, so that we have two sessions. Uh, that is also one of the messages that I communicated to your friend. And then the third one, I was uh, giving an encouragement that uh, let's follow the program for each course. Uh, the requirement is that uh, you should attend classes. Uh, if anything, but not less than 80% of all the lectures, if possible, let's have 100%. But in the case of eventualities that we cannot uh, control, then at least a minimum of 80% of class attendance is required. Secondly, you know that every semester, or the first part before the mid-semester examinations, you are supposed to have an assignment, an essay question. And then I should also mention here that the, because we have delayed by two sessions, uh, the assignment, the essay question is supposed to be submitted this week. And I will do that uh, before Wednesday. I will send it using the normal uh, communication channels, either through WhatsApp and also other means of sending you the essay question. According to the calendar, the due date for the assignment is 27th February. So you have some six weeks, if not five weeks, to prepare. So that's why I need to send you the essay question as soon as possible. These are some of the announcements that I made. Uh, other than that, I would still want to encourage you people uh, to take your courses seriously. Uh, you know, the funny thing or the good thing about university courses is that you do them once and you forget. Uh, and then you go forward. Uh, last semester, I was uh, teaching her two courses, employment law and the managing people. We have gone through, we will not come back to that. This time it is payroll management. We. We'll do it and it will be forgotten. 
So you do these things once. And it is important that let's focus and concentrate on a particular course because it's not like in a secondary school where you have the same subject carried over to another class until you are in year four. Here, the course is end at the end of the semester. So I look forward to your um, commitment uh, and, 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 and the concentration so that the, we, we cover this thoroughly. I will be sending the course outline again after the lecture. But as I'm saying, <laughs> this is the payroll management course. And I'm just doing an introduction. And the que two questions that I asked her were, what do we pay for? Because when we ask people to do something for us, and we're giving an example of washing clothes. If you know, sir, gave a certain lady at the hospital to say, can you wash my clothes? That lady will expect some payment at the end. Now, the question that I was, how do you calculate how much it should be paid? And she gave me some good answers. To say, one, maybe you look at the amount, the number of clothes, the pieces of clothes that she has been given to wash. That's one of them. Secondly, she said, you may also look at the facilities. Uh, possibly an officer will provide the washing powder, and will provide the water, and will provide the bucket. So the pay at the end of the work that the lady will have done will be influenced, will be affected by these factors. So already we are doing payroll then. We are looking at the payment. Payroll management is something that is very interesting to us as human resources uh, aspirants or uh, practitioners. We want to become human resources managers and this is the program that we are following. And you will agree with me that in organizations, people get paid at the end. Mm -hmm. I also get paid at the end. So I'm also in an organization and I get paid. Now, it will be very interesting for us to see how do we pay people, okay? So the questions that I asked, one, in this course will be looking at what do we pay for? That's two. One. Two. How do we know? How do we know that what we are paying is equal to the work done? will be the issues that we'll be discussing in this class. Because that will be payroll management. As a human resources manager, you are at the center of payroll management in an organization. Because you are the people who will explain to your bosses what are we paying for. How do we know that what we are paying Mr. Mrenga, a lecturer, is equal to the work he has done in class? Very interesting. It's a human resource issue. It has to do with people management as well. And it has to do with employment. It has to do with human capital. Because people have to be compensated. Mm -hmm. I have to be paid. But the question is, do we really attach pay to these issues? Do we really consider, as she has rightly said, to say, that lady, you have to consider factors like the volume of work done, and then the facilities that have been used. If they were his or her facilities, obviously the pay would not go high. Then there's another question that will be answering in this course, and that is, who is responsible for pay? Who is responsible for paying people?
Who is responsible? Who is responsible for paying people? Well, the one-on-one -on -one thing is not a problem. If I engage with somebody to work in my garden, I would be the one responsible for pay. But we are looking at an institution like this one. Who pays me? Who is responsible? You see these people? Mr. Grange just came in with this. This is what we are going to look at. It's part of managing pay. Okay? It's part of managing pay. They have to know that I was in class. And I believe you'll come back and then you'll sign something. At the end, I was give you my form that I should sign. That's part of payroll management. Because the questions at the center of releasing the payment are what do we pay for? Mm -hmm. How do we know that what we are paying for is equivalent to the work done? Who is responsible? Okay. And another question that we'll be considering in this course is what factors contribute to pay regulations, to pay regulations. What factors contribute to pay regulations? If it was not uh, a confidential thing, if it was not a consistent thing, I would have said we would have a very practical demonstration from this institution to see the lady there in the finance. She would provide us a very good demonstration of how what factors are considered before you pay out. Okay? What are the factors that you consider? Because you see, what we'll be doing is we will be managing the payroll in our organization. We have to know that we have to pay people based on the work that they have done. Okay? Mm. We have to pay people, we have to attach people, and therefore this course will be focusing on how do we justify paying people the way they should be paid. So when you look at the factors, all these forms and that's what this course will be all about uh, plus these forms that are signed whenever people is part of the factors that are considered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mr benjamin will come with another form a summarized one where all of us sign this is part of payroll management these are So, at the end, these forms will be found, will be directed to the finance department. So, all the lectures' forms will go there. That's part of the factors we consider. And they will be verified, they will be checked, they will be controlled. So that we pay people that have worked. Mm. And we pay equivalent to their contribution. Yes? You want me? Hey, where do I go to? <laughs> I've crossed myself almost everywhere. <laughs> you can come if it's not confidential. Is it confidential? Just come. So what is that? Yeah. Whose organization behavior was that? You? Yeah. What? What again? Yes, you said you should learn organization behavior was. Yes. Yeah, but my, my class is at one, four months. Is it? No, it's from three to five. Today? Yes. So it was me who was. It's, so it's three to five, not one to three. Yes. Then that's okay. Let's meet at three. Then I think I've been from almost everyone else. Yes. Because I think I didn't check the. Have you checked the timetable again? Yes. It's three. Yes. You are sure it's three? Yes. Then we'll meet at three. Okay. Yeah, sure. Right, so these things, I want you to understand why we are talking about payroll when our program is human resources. Before people are paid, the people in the human resources are at the top of paying people. 
Because you are the people who check that these questions have been thoroughly answered. When you get, when I was getting employed here, the first person I was sent to was not the baby people. It was the human resource, that lady, that side. And that was the starting point of payroll management. She asked me a few questions, and this is what we want to we will see again today before we go. To say, how do we manage paying a large number of people? How do we allocate? You see, the main question is, let's try as much as possible to pay people equal to the work they have done. And I can tell you it's not easy. It is not easy. If you recruit a watchman, how, how do you know that what you are paying is equal to the work done? How do you measure the work that a watchman is doing? <laughs> because he can come here at 6 p.m. and sleep, mm. and tomorrow he goes home. At the end, you pay him 70,000 dollars. Are you sure that you are paying equal to what he has done? Is that one? Mm. Huh. Very difficult to understand. So this is why it's an, a human resource issue. It's not a, a, an accounts issue. Paying people is not an accounts issue. It is a human resource issue. That's why you are doing payroll management. Your job will be to advise the people in the accounts to say, I am satisfied. Actually, before the finance releases money, mm -hmm. there will be your signature to say, I approve that you pay these people. When you sign that, that, that wage bill, what you are saying is, I have checked and I'm satisfied that these questions have been answered. Therefore, pay Mr. Maeda. And obviously, it means the human resources officer, possibly the, the registrar, because he is also an administrator and a human resource manager, will have to sign to say, pay Mr. Maeda, because he is satisfied that this is what has happened. But as I've said, maybe for me it's very easy, because there's forms that will check whether I have worked. So they will check this one, oh no sir, and will value this time. Mm -hmm. So he taught this class on a Monday, 23rd. So let's pay. Another one, they will check another, oh yes, he has taught weekend students. This is what other. So we pay. And then in the other one they pay. They are justified. So the bosses will sign to approve. The registrar will say pay, the dean will say pay, and their finance people will say we are paying. So we want to, in this course, the interesting part, and let me assure you, it's not a difficult course, it's a practical course as well. We will try to find out how best, and that's number four, how best we can pay people. How best we can pay people stroke employees. As I've said, the question has always been, should we use pay for performance? And this is one of the things we're looking at. Should it be pay for performance? Or pay for results? Or pay for attendance. It will depend. We will discover that it will depend on different factors. How do you pay for performance? Um, some two years ago, I employed a security guy, a watchman at my house because actually now I'm also planning to to employ one. There are so many thefts at night where I'm staying. Every other day you hear of car batteries removed and the other things. Mm -hmm. The only reason I'm being spared is that I've got a very cruel dog or a very vicious dog. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the, but they will come to see how they can so I'm afraid. And I might even now think of recruiting another watchman. But this time, two years ago, I employed a, a watchman. And the, the first month, he was very good. By 5 o'clock, he was at home. 
he will take a, a broom and sweep around and then he, yeah even if I wake up at 12 media at night and look through the window, I will see that he was awake wherever he was positioned. I noticed that he was quite alert. And should the dog, the dog bark, he would stand up and go around the house and then come back to his position. I was so happy. That was the first month. We agreed that we should be paying him 30,000 kwacha at that time, at the end of the month. Which he gladly accepted. The second month, I noticed the, is that he started giving excuses. Uh, there is a funeral at home, or oh, my firstborn is sick, I want to take him to the hospital. Mm. So the second month, the rate of absenteeism started increasing. The third month, it was worse because I noticed that he only recorded for due days for about 10 or 15 days out of 30 nights. But I still paid him the 30,000. So I said, no, I think I cannot go on. I was now looking at what am I paying him for. So I told him something. I said, look here, I want to change the way I pay you. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, I said, yeah. Every night you come here, you get 2,000 kwacha. That's the change that I'm introducing. And I know he did a lot of mathematics in his head. He said, okay, so if I, every night I come with 2,000, and I do 30 nights, I'll be getting 60,000, and not even the 35,000 budget I was paying. Okay, I said, right. You know what he did? He never absented himself from that time because he knew he was going to get 60,000. What I had done is to attach pay to performance. You attach your pay to performance. So these are some of the basic things that we are going to look at. What do we pay for? I always get concerned with people in government. This is a Monday. If we drove quickly to Capitol Hill, um, I can tell you people are still on their way to work. They don't even care. By 11 o'clock they will be out for lunch. Barely two hours in the office. And they are out to the city centre. Or to the bank. Now the question is what are we paying them for? That's the question. Secondly, do we relate the pay? what they have done. As I've said, there are some duties or there are some jobs where you can easily match the payment. I always get to wonder why football players are highly paid, why the Cristiano Ronaldo's and the Lionel Messi's are highly paid. Okay? The Kylian Mbappe, these world stars, celebrities. Mm -hmm. The question I've always attached as a human resource person myself is how do they attach pay such huge sums of money to those people? It is their performance. They are paid for performance and for results. So this is a course that will be interesting I believe mm -hmm. and that it will not be difficult. It is not very difficult. So what I want to do today is Will be, I will start with how organizations prepare pay, okay? How organizations how organizations prepare pay law. How organizations prepare payroll. The first thing is grading.
faith. They give validation. I will just put it like that. The first thing that you will realize that happens in the organization is job grade. Job grade. When we talk about job grading, we are talking about assigning assigning grades to particular positions based on on qualification experience and relevance of the job. That's the first thing. As human resources practitioners, the first thing when we are recruiting people is to look at their grades. Organizations have got different grades. Mm. Even here, the position of lecturer has got a grade. Even among the lecturers, there are different grades based on qualifications. Some lecturers will be doctors, others before, uh, professors. They have specific grades. A good example is what I know. So you can say, if you look at a, an example of uh, government grades, Example of government grades. The government has employees from grade P to grade A, just as an example. And in between, you have grade B, grade C, grade D. Let's narrow it down perhaps to senior people. Uh, grade A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, grade F. Okay? Mm. These ones would be uh, controlling officers, and all controlling officers will become maybe grade F. And as you come down to C and B, you have priests for secretaries, and grade A would be the chiefs. Secretary or the Secretary of the President and Cabinet. Secretary of the President and Cabinet. Now, before, when you are getting employed, for example, if you get employed in the government, the first thing they would look at is your qualification. Qualification. You have the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Arts in Human Resources or whatever. You have a BHR, Bachelor of Human Resources mm -hmm. degree, something like that. They will look at what grade. And in the government for you people, you'll be given a grade which is called PO, stroke AO. That will be your starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay. BO or AO means professional officer or administrative officer. That's what the government will do to you people. Should you join the civil service? You start either at PO or AO. What is the difference? The difference is this. If you have got a degree, as I've said, the, the, the payroll management starts from grading, position, and job structure. So what they will do is if you are, from example, Luana, let's say someone has got a BSc in uh, agribusiness, okay, and is posted to Ministry of Agriculture, and you you have got your human resource degree and you are posted to Department of Human Resource and Management, mm -hmm. eh? the the thing is they will look at this. One, they look at your qualification. This one has got a degree, Bachelor of Science, Agribusiness. 
you have got a degree, human resources. This is a professional qualification, so they will call this one PO. This is administrative, that's human resource, they will call it AO grade. This is the genesis of managing payroll. And this is done by this department, Department of Human Resource Management in government. It's the centre that looks at how people should be paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what they will do. But the good thing is, uh, not job structure, but salary structure. Well, that must be salary structure. The next thing they will do is they will look at the salary range. Salary range. For example, I, I'm not very sure. The POAO grade might be about 300. I do, I'm not very sure, but let's stay for argument's sake. Uh, it could be something like. Uh, it could be something like. I'm not sure if this is what people are get, getting paid in government at the moment, but, but for argument's sake, let's say 350,000. Mm -hmm. So times 12. Yeah, so they will say salary range for this is 4.2 million to 7.5 million per annum. They normally use per annum. I've just multiplied 350,000 quarter times 12 months. Mm. It's coming to 4.2 million. So maybe they'll say this is the starting point and this is the last point for this PO grade. So what they will do is they will write you a letter and they say following your interviews that you attended and the one writing this is the human resource department, not the finance. Why am I saying this? I'm emphasizing this because there has always been an argument. Who controls the payroll? Is it the finance people or the human resource department? To me, the answer would be the human resource department. Because you are the people who recruit. So the department of human resource or the administrative officer or the whoever is doing the recruitment in that ministry will write a letter to you to say, following the interviews that you attended, I'm pleased to inform you that you were successful. And they will give you your details. Your grade will be AO. Your salary per annum will be 4.2 million. You do the calculations yourself to say at the end of the month it will be uh, 350,000. And then they give in other details. They have started managing the payroll. The human resources department has started managing the payroll by aligning people to positions and grades. So obviously and definitely any letter that you get when you are first appointed will indicate two things. Your grade and your salary per annum. Normally they use the salary per annum, not per month. In most of the organizations. So the starting point of managing the payroll is at the recruitment point. Mm. So that gentleman or that lady will know the grade and will know how much is paid. So you can see the starting, the genesis of payroll management is grading and the salary structure. So when you get this, what, what will happen? What will happen is this Bunda guy may go to Minister of Agriculture or may even go to Rilong ADD or Basungu ADD and become a field officer there or may become a program manager at Blanta Agriculture Development. It doesn't matter. He might be based in Zuzu, but the genesis is he's a PO and he will also be given a letter that this will be the pay. And you might be, as the human resources manager, they might send you to Mulange uh, District Council or this is office, because these days they also have got the human resources department, but recruited by the government. So they will say you will be posted to Mulanje District Council and you will be the Director of Human Resources at the DC's office, District Commissioner's office.
But you see, the salary will be the same. So what have they done? For you to start managing the payroll, you need to understand, to know the grade, to identify the qualification against the grade. Now, what would happen if I was part of the people that have been taken? 